Can't hear my, oh, I'm on the wrong headset. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to the New Zealand Center for Innovation in Sport here. We're outside of Wellington, New Zealand for the Paralympic Qualifying Tournament. We have Australia and Colombia getting ready to play. Third game of the day, second day of competition. And... Australia has won their first match, while Colombia did not win their first match. So this is a very important game for Colombia. Obviously, it's important for Australia as well. Both teams want to make it into the crossover rounds to have a shot at punching a ticket to Paris. And that Paralympic tournament happens in August in Paris. So we'll get started here in a minute with some national anthems for both teams and then play will get going starting lineups for oh I guess we're not doing anthems today great okay thank you for that information the starting lineups now were for Australia is Riley Batt number three James McQuillan number five Chris Bond, number 10, and number 11, Bo Vernon. And for Columbia, we'll see John Orozco, number four. Number seven, Carlos Neme. Number nine, I'm sorry, number 10, Muriel Rodriguez. And number 11, Julian Vargas. So we've interviewed coaches so I think we're going to go down and do one of those right now. So things don't get any easier playing one of the top teams in the world today. How do you feel you'll go? Sabemos que ellos son los mejores del mundo. Para nosotros son los mejores del mundo. Trabajamos este partido. No pensábamos que fuéramos a perder ayer. Pero pues vamos a trabajar para ganar el partido hoy. They are aware that this is the one of the best teams in the world and they want to fix what happened yesterday and they have been training for this really hard so they are going to do their best to try to give them a good fight everyone knows the high point is the glory boys but what low point makes the biggest difference for your team ellos saben cuáles son tus puntos altos y de los bajos cuál crees que pueda haber hacer alguna diferencia el día de hoy la chica de nosotros es muy buena Paola es una muy buena jugadora y también Charlie Capitán también creo que vamos a intentar que ellos hagan algo diferente a lo que mostramos ayer. The girl, Paola, she's an amazing player. She's really good and very sharp. And also the captain, what was it? Carlos. Carlos, he is also gonna make a difference in this game. Spot on with that. They are both really talented. All the best out there, coach. That was the coach of Colombia. Now let's go hear from the coach for Australia. Jason, nice win yesterday from the boys. Everyone rest up well overnight? Uh, yeah, everyone's, everyone's recovered quite well. Um, we were able to use all 12 players yesterday. Um, so everyone's really fresh and ready to go today. Yep. Who's that one superstar out there? Obviously we know Riley Bats, the, the big dog out there, but who's that one superstar besides him that's really gonna make the difference out there for you today? Um, I think, you know, Josh Nicholson's come a long way in the last couple of years. Um, defensive pressure he's able to put on um, helps our team a lot. So it's probably one to look out for throughout this tournament. Awesome. He's good on the wheels too. I know he pops a few. All the best out there, Jace. So we got started here. The Australians score the first try. Columbia looking to answer back. My name is Dave Menjin. I'm joined by Greg Mitchell, and we are going to talk you through this one. Looks like uh, they're probably going to call that a spin. Yep. 
Maybe not. Maybe it just went out of bounds. Just out of bounds, that one. There was no call was at all it? on it. It's hard to see through these prison bars. Orozco works toward the corner. Columbia with a different starting lineup today. Rodriguez did not start the th their first match. Bond fights his way out of there. Now it's across to Riley, and Bat will put the second try on the board. It's hard enough to contain one of them, let alone both of them out there at once, isn't it? They're both just so agile and just everywhere twice. They really are, and the, the good low point play always helps. Vargas looking to get it back to Orozco. He tried to put Vernon into the cone there, but that didn't work, so he just fought his way around. Give and go down low with Bond. He's, he's so elusive in that thing, and we look for the long pass and make it nice and easy, but doesn't have to, just cruises on the outside. Again, Bovernon just sitting on top of the play, having heaps of space and left alone, but not even needed this time. Vargas got trapped in by both his pickers. And Orozco trying to get around Bond without anybody there to help. Vargas cannot pick it up. Pass a little bit out front. And then with the pressure of Bond, it's always hard to make that pick up. Yeah, you know when they come in behind you, you can just hear the painting of them, isn't it? They just keep puffing away and they're right on you. You think you've got it and all of a sudden there's a tap on the chair and too late. A lot of times the guy will also chip at you from behind to chirp at you and let you know he's coming. Yeah, or it's the best way to be. Sure. You don't want to just enjoy the game. You want to be right of heart of it. Builds a little fear. Give and go. There's trouble here for Australia right on top of him. Vernon's got the stop. Orozco got it over, but too late. That'll be 12 second violation and Australia will take it back. So the ball's got to land in the front court so it's before it can be counted as the 12 second finished. And the ball was even in the air at that point so it was slightly forward of where he'd passed it from. And Riley Bat, as cool as you like, just cruises through the middle. Doesn't even have a touch on him. We're going to be saying his name a lot today. Orozco got the pick that he was looking for. Nice little pop pass there. Just drew the Bondi across. And as soon as that gap opened up, he was able to pop it in front of him and cruise across for that easy goal. And that's good spacing. Over the top. Neme picks it up. And that's a turnover. Columbia with a chance to get within one. Orozco gets the penalty try. Yeah, blows McQuillan out of the court. Always feel sorry for the low pointers sitting in those spaces. <laughs> they just like just lined up and just take a flying leap out of the court. Especially once their back is turned. Yeah. Don't shift them as far when they go sideways, but when these big boys hit, they do shift them anywhere they want. Bond quickly back into the play after crossing the try line. Now Australia setting a key. That may wide open on the other corner and Rosco gets pushed into the cone. That'll be a turnover. That Pro Vernon in that corner, just sitting that little bit higher, which allowed uh, Riley to come underneath, get that hit on him just as they're near the cone, and that's, that's what you want to do with your lows. You want to have them holding that position so when they come under, there's, there's still the opportunity for a high pointer to get the, the hit on and not spin them out of, over the line.
So Chris Bond inbounding from the corner. Vargas trying to trap him in there, but. Two interesting schools of thought on that. Usually you put one of your weaker players down there, so you've got your, your strength on court, but it does reduce the range and the, the uh, accuracy of a lot of your passing if you do that, and if you True. put your low pointer down there. So Australia have opted for quite some time to use a high functioning player. Concede they might be lost to the play, but when you've got Riley back lurking out there, you've got a, a few more bases covered. Bat tried to do the same thing to Vargas there, but Vargas was able to turn his chair sideways and got the ball in the try. Quick turn over there from Australia. Just going long, expecting the player on top, but picked up and oh. not quite completed from Columbia. That's tough. Go, you get that turnover. You have an open player. Too much forward momentum on that pass. You do all the hard work and you spoil it just at the end. It's like absolute coach killer there. How long were you a coach? Well, which time? I had a couple of runs at it. Um, yeah? Yeah, so I coached New Zealand for a couple of years, 2009-2010, uh, and then came back um, prior to, from between Worlds and the Tokyo Paralympics. So, yeah, no, it's, it's been such a cool journey to be a part of the team. I've been involved for about 18, 20 years now. Um, so, yeah, but to have the... The luck and, and joy of being the, the head coach for a few of them, it was, it's been really awesome. These days, much easier that's being amazing. on the wheels, that's for sure. Yeah. A lot more sleep. They're having a rough week this week. Yeah, the team's definitely a lot better than the scores have shown. Um, some simple mistakes have really cost us at times, and then you start chasing the game. And as soon as you start chasing the game, you just, that little bit more unknown pressure comes on and you've really got to start hunting things and you do things you wouldn't normally do and you go away from your process. And I think that's almost a trap we got caught into at, at times. Long pass from Orozco. Change the lineup from Australia. They've gone to a more balanced lineup this time. And Pressure. Over there. Really great pressure by Bat. Create that turnover. A big part of that came from Josh Nicholson. He's one of the more dangerous two-pointers out there. Um, that pick bar, the way he jumps over pick bars as well when he's been tried to be stopped by people. But he's, he's really quick with it. Um, and that trunk ability just, just turns so quickly. Makes a hell of a damage on your equipment too, so not missing not having to play him so far. I think that's him that's down on the ground too. Yes, it is, yep. You'll see the... Equipment call now as the ball stops advancing toward the active try line. Just rode up the wheel as he went in to try and swipe the ball away. He hasn't got the biggest flippers to try and swipe it away with. Well, when you don't have a guard in the front of that wheel, it's a lot easier to end up going up top. And a lot of the lower point chairs, too, have a little more camber, which puts them at a little more disadvantage yeah. from that perspective. It's a real sweet spot in the chair. Just between the pick bar and the front of that wheel, you can really make someone fly. Hayden Barton Coots is a real good example of that at times. I know at training, I've seen him just fly people two or three meters as they come in. So leaning forward at the wrong time. But equally, Riley Bat, Chris Bond, they can do the same sort of things too. Big hitters. Great pass. Good heads up play. It'll be Shea Graham bringing it up court. Gets in her dribble and gets it back to bat. Bad able to hop out. It's a really defensive lineup they run Australia with this, with three pick bars out there and three really quick pick bars at the same time. It's it shuts down your options as a team. And then when you've got the offensive Riley, he's just able to be everywhere so quickly, cut off those spaces. You don't need them apart from a long outlet a lot of the time. See there, Shea Graham chasing down, just gets picked quickly at the end. Yeah, you got to pick around a 2 5 chair and a 2 chair.
And that goes with uh, Vernon, who's one of the quicker point fives around too. Here's trouble though. And timeout's called. That was a smart call. He really didn't have any place to go. Yeah, swinging under the low point, of covered that space well. So he ran straight into him. Didn't have anywhere to go but turn back. And as quick as he is, three seconds wasn't going to go from there to halfway. And Australia changing back to their starting lineup now. Bond leading. Just two and a half minutes left. 11 7, Australia leading. Columbia across half. Orozco once again. Nice little interplay between them there. It's, it looks like fingertip stuff, but they just practice those lines. They run the right space. They just put the ball where the player's going to be. And it really makes it easy for you when you're coming through like that without having to put the extra effort in to push a few more times. You just feel like you've got one of them, don't you? And all of a sudden, he just pops it long to the other one that's yeah. hiding up court. And all the way across the court, too. It wasn't just straight up court. It was He had to go to the other side of the court. Managing the clock here with 144 left. Australia trying to ensure that they get the last try this quarter. It's a key part of the game, managing that clock. You can, if you have the ball at the start of the next period, you can open up a couple of goal lead with it. And likewise, you can cut teams' leads down on you if you can manage the clock well. Orozco turns back. There's no he gap there. Help. That corner is not going to be good enough. It's a chance to 10 to the key. No, sneaks through. And Australia hold up the little sign. 52 is where their target score time is. Bond getting chair position up top. But Bat will take it down. He's going to score right about the time he wants to. Looks like Vargas is coming off. So four in the key was the call there. So they've got too many defenders inside the white square. And that's going to give Australia fresh time. I wouldn't be surprised now if they use their timeout to manage that clock even further. Get the ball in. Or they're going to stick with their 52 seconds and just take the goal. Looks like he's going to score. Oh, he's running late by 0.4 of a second there. They'll work on that in practice. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Glad they've still got something to work on at practice. Australia won the last big gold medal at World Championships. They didn't start off great early in the tournament, but they won when they needed to. Yeah, it was noticeable when Denmark put them in one of the early games that they were under a lot of pressure and were basically having to win from there on. And... Oh! That is definitely a spin. Just an aggressive trade try play trying to make sure he couldn't get the ball. But you got to watch. You hit the back of those low point chairs. If they're leaning at all, they're gone. Forward backward, sideways. I think it's any of the chairs. If you're leaning out to the side, it just accentuates any sort of hit you've got with it. I mean, no one's doing it to hurt anyone, but you can sure. get really, really badly hurt at times if you come out in the wrong spot. You've just got nowhere to go apart from down. Nemec calling equipment.
he hit pretty hard. Oh, the refs are not usually very happy about that, having drinking drink bottles on the court. No. So they got really pedantic as well. They could say he's moved from the spot where he called equipment too. So <laughs> they've given a bit of leeway at the moment since he came out so hard. Well, they've got a minute to get him put back together before they have to call a timeout. Australian coaches drawn up a play. All right, we get back to action. If that pass is any indication, Neme is okay. Roscoe winding that clock down. And now we have a wheel that needs to be replaced. Again, number seven. Just constant for him, isn't it? He's just really drawing out the last minute of this game, of this quarter. So Columbia have to be really mindful here that Chris Bond's going to come out of that, bo that penalty box and he'll be flying straight to the far end of the court. I would not be surprised if Riley Bat grabs the ball and hoofs it long straight off it. Um, they've done it time and time again in other games, trying those last two scores. So if they give them any sort of few seconds on the, on the clock, there's going to be a really good chance that they'll score that easy goal. Well, then you, you hope if Columbia wants to stop that, they have to keep Bond in the box. Got to score the goal first. True. That's going to make sure he scores it. And off goes Bond. Oh, and the refs drop the ball. Change of plan now. Bond will take that inbound. So they could ease, they set it up for there. But now Bondi's got a very long hook pass. We're just gonna look to get it in safe and keep it in. Yeah. So we'll finish up the first 13-10, Australia in the lead. We'll be back in three minutes.
Welcome back to the second quarter, Australia versus Colombia here at the Paralympic Qualifying Tournament in Wellington, New Zealand. We'll get started here in about five seconds. Columbia will start. A couple of changes there. Australians have gone with Jaden Warne and Jake Howe coming on. So Riley Batt and Jake, uh, James McQuillan with them. Martinez, Just newly in the game. Out of there. She had no chance. No. It's the pit bull on Chihuahua there, isn't it? It's just, you've just been monstered and there's nothing you can do. Bat takes away the advantage. Up the way Bat goes underneath the play and still ends up on top of it. I, I'm constantly telling my teammates, don't go under the pile, don't go under the pile. When you got that kind of speed, you can go under the pile and get over the pile. Yeah, the mixture of speed and agility at the same time. You can be as fast as you want in a straight line, but you've got to twist and turn. And I mean, He just knows every single little trick to turn his chair. It also helps not having the extra weight of of legs in front of you. Absolutely. Right, you have to turn that weight around all the time, and I find that uh, the guys who don't have legs tend to spin so much quicker. Well, your center of balance is a little bit further back, so you're over the axles more so than if you've got feet sticking out the front. Hit as he crossed. But Jaden Warren gets the try for Australia. That looks like Christian Amaya on his face. Not the best way to fall down, is it? No. No, but also not the worst. You plan being on breaking your fall with your face regularly? Being hit from behind when you land your head on the other person's picker, that's what hurts the most. Yes. Yep. I did that to a teammate a couple days ago. It was an accident. It was in practice. I was going to say, I'm glad it's an accident. I caught his head, and then I kept rolling backward, and I couldn't hold on anymore. And he, Fell down and hit my picker. Roscoe punches it through. Warren now to inbound. Nice pass. It's a really common play from Australia with this with this particular lineup. Jake Howard tends to be that long option trying to draw a defender away. But when you need so much heat down to contain Riley Bat, you've just got to, you've got to all be down there to start with, which opens up that long pass to keep him free. Well, you only have to make that pass a couple times before then the, uh, the opponent has to pay attention to it. And that opens things up at the bottom for Bat. And if you don't have pressure on it, it makes the pass so much easier to get as well. As soon as you have someone breathing down your neck, it's just that little bit more doubt in your mind. And do you go for it? That touch on the wheel can put you out of position slightly. Yet again, Jake's hanging out long. Easy pass, easy goal. Canadians do that really well as well. Have for a very long time. It's like a Trevor special, isn't it? Trevor and Pico and... Yeah, they get those ones down there. Columbia are doing fine when they've got the ball moving. If they're, getting, if they're trying to beat people one-on-one, -on -one, they're, they're really starting to struggle. But once they get moving, they're, they're creating space and passing the ball well between each other. And they're doing much better with the inbound. Yesterday, they had a lot of trouble getting the ball on the floor in the hands of Orozco.
And it puts them in a rough position if they hope to end up getting that third ticket to Paris. Yeah, the small rosters, it really starts to pat, like struggle at the end of tournaments. You've got so many minutes under your belt. You can be as fit as you want, but you still feel it. Warren gets it across half. Really good work from Howe there, just to keep him free, keep him moving. Just cut in front and allow him that ability to go down the short side and, and sneak over half. They may looking to launch it. Here's trouble. And he has just lost it on the fingertips there. The idea is right, it's just the execution didn't match. Something about Orozco's passes a lot of times have a lot of forward momentum. He got a piece of it, just not enough. It's just the way it comes out of people's hands. You see HBC, Hayden Button Coots, the way he just lets the ball go. It just has that little touch of backspin on, so it just kicks up. You saw it there as well from Edmondson as he's popped it over to Bond. The ball's just got that little bit of backwards rotation on it, which means the ball holds up a little when it hits the ground. Rather than having it bounce away from you, making it hard to get a hold of. Quick low to low give and go. Oh, how good is low point rugby at eight point games? Nice pass by the one there. Bond calls timeout. No, equipment. I'm guessing they popped his tire. They had him trapped, but popping the tire lets him out. With Australia having changed to a balanced lineup now, they're really running through the different lineups, keeping everyone fresh and involved in the game. It's quite hard to be on the bench for so long and come into the game and, and really run well, but they've managed to sort of swap and change and keep people fresh at the same time. So yeah, Australia, Jack on now. Australia brought a lot of new players or newer players, people you don't see at the at Worlds or at uh, the Paralympics, at least previously. Getting some good minutes in against some good competition. Yeah, a lot of their squad now, they do have a lot of experience. Uh, James McQuillan and Bo Vernon are probably the two newer of the players, along with Braden Foxy Connolly. It's like everyone else has dreamed to have three three fives. And the ability to slowly bring Braden into the game and teach him rather than being sort of thrown in the deep end because he's got the function makes a big difference in the level of his learning. Being so young as well, he's going to be around for a long time to come. Well, they got to build that future. Patton Bond won't be there forever. Edmondson just weaving along the halfway line, a touch on it. Very close, but not quite close enough from Columbia. Again, they just took over holding that five point lead. Columbia now working against the key of Australia. No trouble that time around. Nice pick. Not only did he have all the space that's just cruising through the middle, but he had options to pass as well, but it doesn't need to. And the picks, like you say, that Edmondson came in and also Ben Fawcett managed to get on, just really keep that space going and not having to worry about the potential of an opportunity to turn over or anything like that. Well, you're a lot like le less likely to turn it over if you don't have to take the ball out of your lap. That's why For they sure. always say make them pass, right? And we're all quads out there. Not in all teams. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it 
Yes, that's the idea. Bond blows through Rodriguez. The referee is telling him he needs to fix something on his wrist. So bench timeout called from Columbia. But yeah, there's a lot of interest in Chris Bond's wrist. And change the lineup again. Columbia only has three players in that huddle. Okay. It's a really good chance to to see what your lines can do, see who works together in, in a situation against a team like this early in the tournament. You'll find any time you play Australia, any little weakness gets exploited. They don't really give you a half chance anywhere. They just want to keep, keep coming, coming at you every single game, every single play. With their large roster as well and everyone getting minutes, it just means you, you have someone fresh coming after you as well. So as you begin to tire, they're always on, on your back and chasing you and thumping you from left, right and centre. Yeah, and you can't discount that uh, being fresh. As long as you're not cold... And so. just popped out of court there. Josh Nicholson making a heck of a mess out the front there. Been an absolute pest. I wasn't sure for a second who went off first because Neme went off as well, but he got pushed off a little bit later. Vargas hangs on to it. It gets across the line to make it 20-24. Three minutes remaining in the half. Bond following his pick. And he'll be able to take that one down without any trouble. Almost toying with him the way he just cruises up court like that. Just swerve of the hips, glides on through. I'm a 3-5 with no trunk, so to watch those guys turn their chairs without using their hands, it's very frustrating. And gets it to an Emmy in the corner, the one point. They've really been targeting that side with the low pointer. Knocking him out of court, getting around the back of him, so it's probably been... If anything, the slightly weaker part of their key defense at the moment. Oh, That's definitely a foul. But which way? He's got his arm off the ball there. so you Did, he, all... did he clear out? I yeah, didn't see his if he... right arm was well okay. off the ball there. So there's a good chance he uh, could also be called for an offensive foul. You've got to be in contact with the ball, otherwise you're going to be in a bit of strife with the ref if they see it and pull well, it that way. I think Orozco might have made some contact with his head. This will be a high chance of a coach's timeout being called here. Two pick bars set up on the Roscoe. Yeah, it's unlikely that they'll have him inbound, but he's done it. Rodriguez will uh, be careful not to get himself a penalty as Bond burns up some time on that clock. I'm going to go with it. Nicholson's heading down to trap him on the baseline. Yet again, it's just going to be hard work to get there if he gets him. Oh, 
<laughs> he got just, pushed off, but he came back on in the same place. The referee also had to go ahead of the play, so she wasn't watching. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough. It's it's one of those things you sort of take advantage of the referee not being there, don't you? Absolutely. You can, you're only in the wrong if you actually get seen doing it. Reality is only what the refs see. What actually happened has nothing to do with it. It's just the same with the 12 second count. That's what it is. It's not 12 seconds. Right. There's been a time or two where I've found my way out of a corner when there was no referee looking. Happens more at training too when there's only one referee. Mm -hmm. And as soon as the other ref looks back, they, they see them and there's a cheeky smile and they know they've done wrong. But in in nothing... practice, I want to see a guy fight his way out of there because if you can't fight your way out in practice, you're not going to do it in a game. But sometimes being trapped in that corner is a nice, it's a welcome break when you're running Iron Man. He's got Vargas in the corner and oh, too high. Just overthrowing, turn over there. Australia looked to score quick, they're 52 is their usual target. So they've got what, 12 seconds to, to get down, take that goal and then that'll set them up nicely for a last to score play later on. And with both bat and bond out there, 12 seconds is more than time. Way more. Three players trying to stop bat. Scores with 54 to go. So as long as they have a tight bit of defense here, they'll give them the last score. Although Columbia saying that they've still got their four timeouts in their pocket, so they could get in the front court, call one of them, and then use that to finish off the quarter. It really would be a great thing to do at this point. They've got the the possession arrow is actually in the favor of Australia right now. So they want to get that last try. He's put himself in a bad spot there. Ten no dribble. Ten no bounce. Oh. That's a rough one to take right there. So now Australia has a chance to get it the last try. Put them up by eight going into halftime. Vargas beat him to the ball. Bond made that hit trying to get uh, chair position on him. And now Columbia gets another opportunity. Seven seconds Six. to go. And out of nowhere, Bat recovers, gets back in there. Rodriguez gets across. Gets across right oh, on the buzzer. Whoa. That was quite a play. I'd love to see that one again. That was really just for uh, Neme to get into position so he could get the ball to Rodriguez and hold on as Bond tries to nail him into the cone. So we'll go into halftime now. It's a 10-minute break. Columbia losing to Australia 28-22. We'll see you in 10.
Welcome back. We are just about to start the second half of this match between Australia and Colombia. Australia leading 28-22. This is our second day of pool play for the Paralympic qualifier. Five teams have qualified so far, U.S., Japan, Great Britain, Denmark, and France. And the remaining three teams for the Paralympics in August will qualify here. So Australia right now in charge in this game, making their case for their opportunity to play in Paris. Chris Bond will start us off here. Columbia in their key. Neme punched out very quickly. Nicholson doing the damage there. It's really, really powerful with his trunk. I can see that. Probably mean, but he looks a bit like a keg on wheels, really, but it just packs an absolute punch when he gets in you. And he's relentless as well with that pick bar. So, Columbia preparing to inbound. Nice little turn there to get through that gap. It wasn't very big at all. Pops it over. And again, last lap ball, scores the goal. Scores a try, sorry. It's quite a transition. I, I still, every once in a while, Forget try. But it helps us align with rugby. I've been watching a lot of rugby here on television. But my club team was aligned with the Detroit rugby club for a long time. So uh, we would go to their games. They would come to our games. They, do, they did a lot for us, volunteering and, and helping us with stuff. And It's nice to have a, you know, a club with 55 years of history and wearing their colors and yeah we had a little bit of connection with some of the super rugby teams here in New Zealand um, the Auckland training guys have um, had the blues along so the, the super rugby teams come along and train with them um, at times I've had the All Blacks come along and do some stuff with some of the guys based up that way I know uh, Sam Kane All Black captain from last year he was he was in a chair <laughs> having a good old go um, he was very lucky he didn't end up in a chair himself when he uh, <laughs> actually broke his neck over playing for the All Blacks. Oh, but, you're kidding. Um, yeah, he was just, has such strong, powerful neck muscles, luckily, um, stopped there being any sort of permanent injury. Um, but wow. yeah, he, he had a long time out of the game from that, so I certainly don't wish that on anyone. Um, but we do have a few rugby injuries in our New Zealand team at the moment. I have a friend who broke his neck playing rugby, now has played wheelchair rugby, played on Team USA, in uh, way back in the day, when we first uh, did the demos demonstrations in, in Atlanta. Or uh, was that Atlanta? I think it was. Yeah, New Zealand, we've had a long link with the Rugby Foundation. So it's um, a support network through Able Bodied Rugby that helps support the guys have injured themselves with serious injury through through rugby. Um, so in our team at the moment we've got Cody Everson, Tainafi Lafono, Rob Hewitt and Dan Buckingham all of have, have, have rugby injuries um, be it from scrums or tackles and the the rugby foundation has been amazing for them just supporting them with covering costs of chairs and modifications to their houses That's at great. times. Uh, transport, player levies, all sorts of things. So really lucky in New Zealand having support like that and they have functions every year where the All Blacks go along to and have memorabilia to, to auction off and sell some pretty pricey tickets for, for, to raise that pool of money to help continue to support people in their passions. It does help that it's a national game as well, so once you're an All Black you get yes. a bit of notoriety. We had our singlet presentations for the New Zealand team 
this weekend we had former All Black Corey Jane come along and present them to us. So Olympic Sevens win gold medalist, World Cup rugby winner. He's 55 Test All Black. Wow. Hell of a character too. He's now on the coaching staff which, for the Hurricanes, which are based here. Orozco gets it to Vargas. He tried to push it through on his own. Too many pickers out there. Bond needs to get across half. really can't underestimate the amount of work that goes on by the low pointers there. Bo Vernon didn't look like he was doing much, but just those little lines, little positions he was getting just allowed Bond just to sail through and easily to do it too. So you can serve so much energy with a good low pointer. And yet again, the Colombians showing exactly the same thing, getting the low pointer to free them up and cruise on by. Yeah, and even having that low pointer as an option, a pass option, forced Bond to have to make a choice. And allowed the ball to get across half. It's running out of time. Timeout called by Chris Bond. That's their second floor timeout of four that are available per game. Columbia yet to use one. So just when you think you're getting a little bit of a run on yourself, they bring on a brand fresh, brand new fresh 3.5 player in Braden Foxy Connolly. And when you start thinking you've just got a, one new one to deal with, you've got Riley back coming to the game as well. And Columbia certainly wasn't ready for that one. No, Roscoe was looking to call equipment and was missed by the referees, and the Australians took a good chance to steal an easy goal. Just popped his axle back in. Back gets his hand in there, but it'll be Columbia's ball in the corner. It's always a hard thing to do to leave that ball when someone tips it out of your lap. You, you just want to reach and try and grab it. As soon as you touch it and you're the last thing that touches it, turnover ball and what should have been yours is given away. Happens to me all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it could be... If you can let it go, it can be good, but oh, trying to push him into the meter is a Roscoe. Bat trying to get over his shoulder. And Amaya can't get the space he wanted to. Vargas will not be there for that pass. Good defense by Foxley Connolly. You've got four times. Keep him off the ball. And yeah. You look for a Hail Mary pass when the count's getting high. It's it's, it is basic rugby, but when you're under the pressure like that, you just don't think straight. That's the problem when you get tired later in the games, but you're always trying to do whatever you can, and you just forget that, that simple out's there. Well, and they were playing without timeouts for most of yesterday's game. Foxley Collie with a good turn of speed there. It's going to make them have to think a little bit hard about what they're going to do on defense. and just keeps trying to go back in there and get it get it to Roscoe. Able to get the corner. Look at 29-36. Roscoe will sit for a minute. Got inside, made contact with Bond when he was going after that ball. 
it's so tempting when you go through a gap like that. You think you've got a half chance, but at the same time, you're only putting yourself in a bad position for the next play. So Australia will get the ball in, get it over half, and he'll get tied up on that penalty box and make them force that decision as to whether he inbounds the next one, and then it puts pressure on the players on court. Roscoe does call to the inbound. Foxley Connolly with that try, number 15 for Australia. It's going to be an easy give and go here. Bad is going to try and make sure that's not so easy. Amaya trying to get open, but that 3-5 on him is making it difficult. And Columbia wins their three on one at the top of the court. A lot of work to get it across half, though. The further down you get the ball, so so close to that baseline, all the outlines become part of the play, and you can't retreat to try and get around someone, so you're always under pressure. They're just getting the ball lower and lower every time, Columbia, and it's starting to really hurt them. I think it's just a moment or two that's, I think, going to turn very quickly against them. Oxley Connolly trapped, facing the wrong direction, but able to get it to bat. And Roscoe saving some energy. Amaya. Caught. trouble. They're all stuck there. He was able to turn, but he turned 180 degrees, so he was still able to be pushed off the side. So able to get the timeout. But that's a tough position to get yourself stuck in. Mangua able to hang on to the ball, though, and call the timeout. What made it worse for him, too, is if he could get the ball away, two of his teammates were right there, so there was going to, have to be an extra pass to get the ball up and get it into space. And with only another three or four seconds, it's not the easiest thing to do just to throw a pinpoint pass to someone who's doubled in the front court. Australia looking to trap the Colombians on their bench as they come off here. So once the referee blows their whistles, they've got 10 seconds to the end of their timeout, but pretty much usually means it's a free-for-all. So the reason they're sitting back there is you're not allowed in that quarter of the court. You can sit in the key or over the half, but not in that, that team space while they're having their timeout. Gives them the opportunity to have a conversation without you listening to it. So Vargas is now trapped way up there. I've called another coach's timeout. Might be an opportunity for them to try and catch Australia. Not ready for them to come back out. Call that timeout and then go back out. But this is their last coach's timeout. Getting plenty of instructions from the coach. Sometimes with the coach, though, you can tell them all you like. It doesn't mean it's going to register and actually happen. I think the extra few minutes of a rest there is really going to help Orozco. I know he looks like he's got a wrist issue. So Columbia with a little more balance with this line with Amaya out there. Got three ball handlers. And Bat gets knocked out. Playing aggressive defense at the line. Vargas just gave him a little bump. He was already right there. Foxley Connolly met at half by Amaya and out of bounds. Just given that little line, showing the space. He comes up there and gets the bump out of court. Danger zones. 
It's one of those things to be mindful of, and it's sometimes it's a good matchup offensively, having the, the balanced lineup, having three sets of hands, but it just means that if the high low's out there, they've got extra speed on that other person. So if you can't tie them up on their ball, when you're chasing the game as well, it makes it harder. So th that's a that's a strange change. They had three players on Vargas, and then three more players coming on, and they kind of took turns holding him in place. Vargas number eleven for Colombia. Maya gets a pick, can't get across. Tosses it up, and Bond steals it away. Or bat, sorry. This is going to be really, really hard for Columbia at the moment. With Orozco off, they haven't got that same main ball carrier out there. They're going to rely on mids and lows to begin the ball up. And it could be turnover city. Yeah, he was, he was uh, something in his wrist or his forearm. Looks like they might be icing it over there. Columbia definitely not the same without him. He did a good job getting out there, containing bats so that Vargas could go away. He's done really well. They're playing with five and a half points at the moment compared to an eight point lineup, well, a nine point lineup with two female players out right. there. It's hard enough playing Riley with eight points on your own, let alone having a couple short. I was just doing that math when you, when you said that. It's like, wait a minute. Vargas has Neme on the other side. Oh, or a, that was Amaya. Almost hit the picker of his chair. But he was able to pull it in. Pat will take his time, work the clock down. Two minutes left on the clock in the third period. It's really just starting to drift away now from Columbia. Well, not having a Roscoe out there, they're, uh, they got their work cut out for them, that's for sure. When he was out there, just him and Nime together, they were just working so well to free him up when you've got Bat and Bond chasing you down, he was just able to get a little bit more space, get forward. But with his, without his extra speed now, it just means those outlets have disappeared and it's going to make it harder again. They had Amaya double teamed at the other side of the court. And even though it was three on two, with Riley Bat being one of those two, makes it tough. Oh, off the front of this chair. Rodriguez going to go for it. He's got time and momentum. So with Rodriguez out there, they've gained an extra point on court. So they've gone to six and a half. And if anything, they've actually opened the court up a lot more since they've done that. Yeah, it's interesting because... Because Orozco is the primary focus of that offense, Vargas will get the ball from an inbound once in a while, but usually he's playing up higher. And despite the triple, 
Riley Babb will get the try. 104 remains in the third. Emma takes that one on the fly. Equipment cold. That was his tire? Yep. Shea Graham making short work of that tube. Now she's back on Amaya. He's done really well to get free up the top. Downside for him is the game's not even close to starting again. Well, they also know that Columbia doesn't have any other options, so they can wear him out. We got rid of the contact before the whistle call in the United States. And I think it, I think it's great. Yeah, I, I thought as a high pointer that uh, it might be to our disadvantage, but I think Very it makes the game seldom move. called now in international rugby. Yeah. Um, I think it depends on the level you're at. Um, I think there's still a place for it at the, the lower levels because it's a real disadvantage for some people when they're learning the game. Um, but internationally, it doesn't really make much sense anymore. I think maybe bringing back a charging call so someone can't just line someone up for no reason um, might be the better way to have a contact. Um, you don't see that called very much at all unless somebody really blows somebody up with no, it's a three, almost intense. Three five picking on a point five generally, yeah. isn't it? And most of them have the, have better sense in doing that as well. So Australia look to use a timeout here. So they refresh the shot clock to 15 seconds in time with the game clock. And mean their last to score play will be nicely set up for them. And this good practice for any game opportunity when, when you need to score that last try. Pat tripled, throws Rodriguez. Got his picker in there and just turned him right over. Love to see that one again. Australia hadn't really set up as well as I'd have liked that time. Riley Bat was caught on the sideline, had three players on him. Just muscled right through him. He's breaking his fall with his face as well on the front of that chair. Ball comes into Sable Jack, through to Riley Bat. He's got 10 seconds and he scores quick on it. I think the logic there is that he thinks he can get one back and t score another one. He didn't have to score that quickly. He could have just taken his time. That's why they took the time out. And we will have one more inbound. 0.3 seconds remaining. Doesn't really matter who it goes to unless uh, Vargas can hit Amaya in the corner. <coughs> Neme looking to attack it. Time expires in the third. So we will take a three minute break and we'll come back in the fourth. Hope to see you then.
Welcome back to Wellington, or just outside of Wellington, the capital of New Zealand, where we are at the Paralympic Qualifying Tournament. This is day two of action, Colombia versus Australia. Australia in charge at this point. Starting our fourth period. And Colombia's pass intercepted. Colombia at the, a disadvantage at this point. Two, four, six. Looks like they got seven points out there now. I guess six and a half. Martinez is... Uh, I take that back. It's, it's, they could be running more points. Amaya trapped on that sideline, had to get rid of it. He was either going out or calling timeout. I think someone called it for him. You might as well use them. You can't take them to the next game. You can't sell them for beers later on. And when you're under pressure like that, there's a couple of times early in the game they could have used that to their advantage. But they've had them left over, so you might as well get stuck in and use them now. Australia having changed their lineup again. So they've gone with the 353 1.5. So if it follows on the same theme earlier, be looking at Jake Howe being the long option off the inbounds, uh, Jaden Warren being the inbounder, with Foxy Connolly just weaving his magic through the middle. First, they need to work on a little bit of defense, putting pressure on that inbound. Martinez delivers it over the top to Amaya. Foxley Connolly closes that hole. And it'll be Martinez getting the try. She tries to shut the door there. Quillen running that long line this time. Jake Howe was caught down low for the inbound, so he wasn't able to get up there, but they've got obviously pretty clear plans to have one of those low pointers long and be that option. Ball comes in, beats him on the sideline. Warren chasing him down. Foxley Conley comes in for the hit and cleans him up good and proper. Also made the pass come off the chair of Vargas. I think the intimidation of that hit was enough to make him throw an errant pass. Yeah, part of the power and just knowing someone like it's coming at you, but he's got quite a good reach on him too when he, when he reaches up just as he comes in on that hit. So you've got to put the ball that little bit higher. And then when he's just not as comfortable putting it over the top. He might have gotten a piece of the ball. So Columbia will collect themselves. Run their play against this Australian key defense. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. They're all in the key. Nice corner there. They may hold strong. Vargas got some help there from Neme. Around the corner. Gets the try. Foxley Connolly. Tries the Riley back trick of diving under. Doesn't quite work from the same. Not quite that same level of skill and ability just yet, but give him a couple of years. He's going to be an absolute menace out there. Again, Martinez. Throwing some great lines into that key. It's like early on she was holding wide on the corner and got the pop over. This time she was running the short line in close and managed to get the handoff to her. When you've got those three on two situations, it's so much easier if you spread the key and get those passes in. Someone's going to be free if there's three players down there defending, but no. Jaden Warren takes the safer option, calls the timeout. Yeah, he was turned away, so he didn't have a good, clear vision of the court. Not a bad decision. 
Foxley Connolly just went just a little bit too far that time. If he'd stuck short of halfway, he would have had the ability to be in range and that pop pass, and he could have come up to him, and then he could have passed it on to the, the low pointer who was up long. Horn down the short side. Easily passed them this time. Nice wee jink and jive there to slide through. They did a good job with ball movement there and, and coming back and helping each other out. Both from a ball handler and a picking perspective. Foxley Connolly, though, not going to be stopped. Really good patience there. He could have easily let the ball go to Jake Howe, who was sitting wide, but came across to be a pick. And just as he looked up, he, he saw early on that he was coming to him, so he just held up, waited for it, and pushed across and carried on. You know when you've got your set plays, you just want to run up and just let the ball go, but at least he had the heads-up option to, to see what was happening in front of him and not just let go because he expected him to be there. Looks like Australia's going to switch it up again. Columbia only has six players here. Seven. I, was say, I hope it's still seven. Someone must have been hurt otherwise. <laughs> but Orozco, it looks like Orozco's going to sit the rest of this one out. It's a really smart move by them there. I mean, he was clearly hurt before. For a game that's already gone, there's no point in just putting someone out there for the sake of it. You're better off to retain that energy and not make that injury any worse than it is. Just regroup after the game and take some of the learnings about t playing this top team out and then battle on in the future. Edmondson comes down, just misses him short of the half. There's a pop pass. Nicely through the middle again. Really, again, great lines. Bond loses a handle on it. In 12 seconds. They've almost become more settled on their defense at the moment without having a Roscoe Columbia. out there. Yeah. If there was a lack of trust before and then people were just going for the ball and giving up that free option, they've just sort of trusted their process and stuck to it. Australia back in key. Sable Jack hounding him there. Pop goes over and again nicely Ooh. in the corner. Can't be much in that one. Lean back, got that catch. Weaving. Just looking to pass. He's got Bond at the line. He had to get rid of it. Really bunched through the middle of the court there. Earlier on, Australia were playing a lot more width in the court. Through that play there, they just almost played in a straight line down the middle of the court, which was causing them trouble. Oh, that's got to be frustrating as a coach to watch that pass. I'm not even sure where he was throwing it. It did look like it was thrown to Ben Fawcett, to be fair. Yes, he had a <laughs> lot of pressure on him. It's a lot harder to make that pass when you're going backward. Because it takes a lot of oomph out of the... Out yeah, of your the momentum's a big thing when you're passing from a chair. Even if it's just a subtle push on you and you just lose that little bit of forward power, you lose your balance slightly as well. Not everyone has trunk out there to be able to hold themselves steady and throw it hard. Right, and when you throw, you want to use your hips too, but a lot of us don't have any of the muscles down there to help us wind up and, and push that ball out. All on the one side and it still gets it through.
Again, they're playing really tight there. No one's looking to spread, just banking on they're going to find a gap and get through. Heck of a swipe on Edmondson as well. He sails away for another one. He did a good job protecting the ball. Columbia came in oh. here with high hopes. Ouch. Hit that the is chair a of Vargas hit on there. the way down. I think with his forearm. He looks like he's okay. Perfect bit of timing from Bond there. Just as he swung across, hit him fair and square, straight and yep. was one of the, not quite fair on the front of it, but just on the angle of the wing there. And as he was turning, just that momentum carries him over and tips him up. I mean, that's the sort of play you're looking for as a high pointer. You want to put someone on the ground. Generally, you want the ball to be in their lap and when they fall right. out at the same time. But just putting pressure on people like that, they're going to think twice next time you come towards them. So that makes it that little bit better if you've got the pop pass coming through to them. They're going to think about it, worry about it. And if they have their eyes on you rather than the ball, there's a good chance of a turnover. So Vargas will set up and try and do this one more time. Into Neme. That's a great position for a one-pointer to get into to receive that. He's had no space at all, worked in, and just controlled it like a standard high-pointer would. Fifty-two forty-three, just under three minutes remain in this game. Australia looking to press on the halfway line. He slides around the outside. He's got the pace to get in front of Fawcett and score in the corner. in Australia really low as well. They've been taking that out of the Colombian playbook. Edmondson's got a huge inbound, but they're all taking it three, four metres from the baseline. So it just restricts your options when that happens. You don't have as much to, space to re, re, retreat from to get around anyone that's trying to get in there with a pick. Now there's trouble for them. Amaya back with the ball. He did a, you know, they making that pass over Bond is a scary thing. And he got, he got away with that one. He was able to get it. Gosh. The smart play is happening is the outlet's getting away from his arms. They're getting into space rather than having to let them make them throw over top of Bond. Yeah. Earlier in the game, they were starting to throw more over him, him and Riley back. 40 seconds is up there, turnover. No, just in time for a timeout, but I don't think they had one. Nope, goes to a, a turnover. It was very close to. So we will get the high point inbound from the corner, as you talked about. Foxley Connolly. Up to Bond. Easy as you like. You just, you feel like you're starting to get a bit of rhythm and now come two, three, fives you have to deal with. And you know that Columbia practices with the intent of Orozco being the focus of their offense. And they're doing a, an excellent job considering that they don't have the focus of their offense that they practice with all the time. 
Yeah, it looks like Vargas went across. Yeah, just clipped by both of them on their line while the ball was in the air, so he's out of court. Nothing he could have done about that, though. He was hoping for the pass. It came, but Bond got there and knocked it down, so he couldn't get it. They're still looking for the 52 score time. Got to practice those good habits. They're getting closer and closer, aren't they? Give them the penalty try on that one. Bond was kind of hoping that they wouldn't. Maya coming around. Forty seconds. Vargas just slowly coming in behind his lead. Gets Amaya in the middle. Columbia have done a great job here staying within 10. They could easily hit this blowout once uh, as Orozco went off, but they've really hung in there. Australia don't ease up at any time. Yeah, and playing a point and a half under. That was definitely underwhelming. <laughs> I, th I think he thought Bond was going to go instead of continue to come back at him because he, he definitely overthrew him by much more, more than you would have expected. Just a really awkward passing lane towards the sideline, though. You, you got all that open space with all the speed in the world out there. Yeah, you're really threading the needle. Ten seconds to go. Tries the touch pass. But Martino's already out well past that point. So 6.2, Australia would take their last shot. Bond going toward the try line. That's Intercepted. Right pick up. And that'll be our final. 55 45, Australia beats Colombia. So Colombia now 0 and 2, Australia 2 and 0. They both have one more pool game tomorrow. So it'll be... I should know this off the top of my head, but uh, Australia plays against Germany tomorrow and Colombia plays against Switzerland in the first game of the day tomorrow. That'll be a bit tighter, that one there, for sure, but I think Colombia's going to have the, the wood over them there. The Swiss have a, a more balanced team, but yeah, Colombia with that, that strength and the tenacity they showed at the end there to have basically all their mid-pointers and low-pointers out there scoring points is going to really carry through nicely to, tomorrow for them. Yeah, and I, I don't know for sure what the long-term prognosis is for Orozco, but let's hope he's okay. Obviously, we don't want anybody to be injured or not be able to play. Even if we get out there, you know, you want to beat, beat people at their full strength. But the W counts more than anything. So the bat icing that shoulder. Hopefully that doesn't mean that he has anything to worry about for this next game because he's got one game coming up tomorrow. They got the crossovers on Saturday. I think it's one of those things. They always look to have, have prehab. So you always preventative rehab recovery after games as well. So it's not surprising he's got that. All right, so let's go down to interview with an Australian player. Can you see who that is? Andrew, second game up, another victory. How'd it go? Yeah, it was a great game. Look, Columbia always bring it. Um, the first half was really tough for us, unfortunately. I think one of their guys got a bit of an injury, but gave us a chance to run all of our lineups, and, yeah, it's a great opportunity for that. Good. And uh, coming up tomorrow, it's uh, who's, who's your next game up, and what's your thoughts? Playing against Germany, uh, they've won every game so far. They're looking really strong. So, yeah, it's going to be a tough competition tomorrow. Great. Go well, man. Thanks. 
that Andrew Edmondson from Australia. And as you see, Australia set up in the middle. Columbia on the sidelines, talking it out. They've got... I don't know that we're going to have an interview for Columbia, but we will see shortly. Depends. All right, so we do have one more game coming back today. And that game is Netherlands versus Canada at 6 o'clock. Austria or New Zealand time. Uh, hopefully you'll be back. That's uh, what an hour and a half from now In case you need to convert So it's currently oh, it's an hour from now. So hopefully we'll have you back. Thanks for joining us